Crystal. It's a real pleasure to follow the uh, right honourable gentleman, the member yeah. for Banbury. I agree with everything that he said about the front benches and their approach to this debate. And I also agree with what he said about the equivalence of human rights. Of course, everybody in this House on all sides agrees that everybody's human rights should be protected. But it does no good to sit back and pretend that there isn't a particular problem about Christian persecution in the world today. And that needs to be highlighted. And we shouldn't be feeling guilty about it right. or feeling that we have to be politically correct all the time. We should say it as it is here, here. and be very, very clear here, that there is a real issue here, as been highlighted by previous members. Uh, I have to say, I was interviewed this morning on the BBC uh, in, in Radio Ulster uh, this morning about this particular debate. And in the four questions that were put to me, the thrust of the questions were, why on earth are you calling this debate? What's it about? The, the, the subtext, of course, was it wasn't really that important. Now, I've come to expect that from the BBC. But let me tell the House, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, that I have found that in my constituency and across Northern Ireland, and I'm sure it goes for many right honourable and honourable members, that people are concerned about what is happening when suffering occurs. And of course they're concerned about all forms of suffering. But you only have to look at the fantastic response there are to natural catastrophes, to the fantastic uh, contributions that are made, for instance, in relation to the recent typhoon in the Philippines. People in my constituency sitting out to raise money. The idea that people shouldn't be concerned about what's happening in terms of other parts of the world is typical of the sort of liberal media that we have in this country. But the fact is that people are concerned, and it's right for us to raise these issues uh, today and to highlight the persecution that Christians face and to provide a voice to those who are oppressed because of their, face, of their faith. Now, Ms. Madam Deputy Speaker, the persecution of Christians is not something new. We know from historical records, from biblical times, there's been persecution. But the staggering fact is that today Christianity is the most persecuted faith in the world, with over 100,000 Christians killed each year due to their faith and one Christian killed for their faith every 11 minutes. And according to the World Evangelical Alliance, over 200 million Christians are denied fundamental human rights because of their faith. And over the last three years, we have seen a deterioration globally in the situation. So it's a government's responsibility to highlight what is going on to other governments, to uphold the human rights of everyone who is suffering persecution because of faith, and in particular Christians, given the severity of the purge now going on in many regions of the world. And to follow on from what the Honourable Lady from Congleton said in relation to Afghanistan, it is particularly painful that in relation to Afghanistan, where there has been so much sacrifice and suffering on the part of our troops, and so much aid and help and assistance given, that there are no church buildings at all left, and the Christians are unable to meet in public due to them being subject to numerous cases of kidnapping, assassinations and abductions. And the same goes for Iraq. Canon Andrew White was mentioned a moment ago, and he has said that Christians in Iraq are frightened even to walk to church because they might come under attack. All the churches are targets. We used to have 1.5 million Christians. Now we have probably only got 200,000 left. There are more Iraqi Christians in Chicago than there are here. Now, the persecution of Christians was the subject of a, of a debate in Westminster Hall by, initiated by the Honourable Lady from Congo, and that focused on persecution in that area. And the Arab Spring, which uh, has been welcomed by so many, has turned out to be a chilling experience for Christians of the regions, Christian of that region. Christians are being disproportionately affected by the violence. Egypt and Syria are countries where Christianity is being effectively, systematically wiped out altogether. In Saudi Arabia and the Gulf, which uh, the Shadow Minister mentioned, is second on Open Doors uh, watch list. There is no provision whatsoever for religious freedom amongst its people. The Minister for Faith and Communities in another place recently said that Christians are often targeted for collective punishment, as some groups believe they are responsible for what are perceived as injustices committed by the West. And that is particularly striking in countries, communist countries like North Korea, which is number one on Open Doors watch list, and in China. And I want to just pay tribute. Yes, I, will give it. I thank the Right Honourable Member for giving way, but isn't it ironic that we have now got to the stage in the world today, and in Europe of course, that other religions are now admitting that Christianity is under severe pressure and persecution? As in Iraq. 
Yes, I, I agree with what the Honourable Gentleman has said, and I, I was just going to come on to uh, pay tribute to organisations which are also doing their level best to highlight what is going on in the world today. Organisations like Open Doors, yes. like Christian Solidarity Worldwide, the Barnabas Fund, and Aid to the Church in Need are just some of the organisations which uh, seek to highlight these issues of persecution against Christians. Now, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, um, I don't intend to run through a list of all the countries. I've mentioned a few. Uh, other honourable members have raised particular issues in countries like North Korea. China has been mentioned. Um, but could I just mention in particular uh, Nigeria? Uh, which, um, because the, the problem in Africa is, is a growing problem where Islamist extremism has penetrated uh, a lot of what is going on in terms of uprisings, in terms of destabilisation of countries. And in Nigeria in particular, there is a very, very serious attempt by Boko Haram to create an Islamic state and to annihilate Christians and Christianity from that country. Uh, we could mention Kenya, where there has been incidents, Eritrea, which is a particularly uh, bad situation. Uh, and the Central African Republic, uh, amongst others. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, today's debate provides us with an opportunity for the representatives of this United Kingdom to speak out, to highlight uh, the particular problems being faced by Christians worldwide, um, and to in ask that our government do even more in terms of its bilateral relations, in terms of its aid uh, programme, in terms of its foreign relations, to make it clear that there must be some consequences for countries who continue to violate human rights on such a massive scale uh, when our country has such uh, close links in other ways. Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights needs to be upheld and defended, and never more so in this day and age when Christian persecution is so rife. Yeah.